everyone. Happy Tuesday. Happy So What Day. And happy early Thanksgiving. We are so close to Thanksgiving Day. So I hope that everyone out there is giving thanks for your family, your friends, um, all that good stuff. Um, I'm super excited about the day, even though we're keeping it small this year. Um, but I, I think I'm ready. So that's good stuff. Um, also, this weekend, you know, I don't know about you, but always the Friday after Thanksgiving is when I put my tree up and I swap out the decor and uh, we start uh, getting in the holiday spirit. So I'm excited for that as well. Maybe some of you probably already have some trees up or some of that holiday decor ready and, you know, waiting in the wings as well. This weekend, or pretty close, um, is also the start of Hanukkah. Hanukkah starts on the 29th of November this year. So I'm going to start the show today with a couple of Hanukkah ideas for, you know, whether you are going to go celebrate Hanukkah with someone else or you want to create a quick and easy um, decor idea. I've got that for you as well. And, you know, both of the projects I'm going to go over today can be changed to suit other holidays. So I'm going to show you that as well and how you can adapt these tutorials to fit the holidays that you celebrate um, or really any time of year. So we will take that inspiration and make it our own, just like we do with so many projects here on So What. So before I get into that, I talked about this briefly last week, but our lovely Llama webcast is coming up soon on December 13th. It is a Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. We will be going live with Desiree Havoc of Desiree's Designs. This is our lovely llama in the hoop project. You can create a super cute pillow or wall hanging using the same design files, the same kit, the same methods, just finishing it a little bit differently. So it's a versatile project and you can use the designs featured in this in the hoop project for other things as well. And Desiree is going to go over lots of machine embroidery tips and techniques we will be working with Sulky Puffy Foam. If you have never tried that product, it's really cool and allows you to create dimensional techniques or dimensional portions of your designs. We will also be learning how to make our own tassels for additional embellishment using Sulky uh, Petite's 12 weight cotton thread. We'll also be learning how to add machine embroidery or to machine embroider plushy things like the faux fur fabric that's featured on this really cute llama. So I'm going to do a little tutorial on something plushy at the end here today, but I wanted to make sure that you are all signed up, registered, and ready to go for the lovely llama webcast on December 13th. So that is your friendly reminder for that. The first project I'm going to start with today is these lovely pot holders. Now, these are obviously great for Hanukkah and the entire tutorial plus the applique for the Hebrew letter that's featured on these dreidel shaped pot holders is available on the Sulky blog at blog.sulky.com. I also linked to the entire tutorial in the description of today's post so you can head on to the description. If you're not seeing all the links, be sure to click the little see more button and they will all populate for you and you can head right to the blog and get the full tutorial. So you don't need to write down anything here. You can just watch and listen and learn. And then when you want to go make the project, you can grab all everything you need, supply list, cutting dimensions, all that good stuff from the Sulky blog. Now something occurred to me while I was preparing this blog post for you. By the way, this was designed by Cheryl Lynch, a uh, Cheryl Lynch fiber artist. She has a um, great website full of quilting tutorials. She curated a kit for this project as well. 
So you can click on over and hear, um, learn a lot more about her as well on the blog post. But while I was preparing this blog post, it occurred to me that if you flip this guy around and put your hanging loop on the point, it looks just like a little house. So you can swap out your fabrics, make this into a little Christmas house or even a manger, and you can hang this up for Christmas if that is the holiday that you celebrate. So it kind of does double duty as either a Hanukkah place uh, uh, pot holder. I was going to say place not. <laughs> as either a Hanukkah pot holder or a little Christmas house or something like that. All right, so a little something for everyone. Now, the piecing process for this pot holder is really unique. We're actually going to piece it on top of a rectangle of batting. All right, so first off, we need to trim up the rectangle that is used for the upper edge center of the placemat. And again, all the dimensions, everything you need to cut is on that blog post. All right, so you're basically creating a little um, diamond shape on the bottom of this rectangle, and then you will center it along the upper edge of your batting square or batting rectangle. We're going to piece right on top of this. It's pretty cool. All right, so you start adding your pieces. As you can see, there's another little rectangle that gets added to that center sort of diamond point. And once you sew that in place, you'll press it open so that um, all of your raw edges are concealed. It's almost like we are paper piecing, but we're not using paper at all. We're just piecing this right on top of that batting piece. Then you're going to repeat for the opposite side, and then we start adding these angled pieces to create the rest of the pot holder. So again, I am just giving you an overview of the project and you can get all the instructions and dimensions of all of these pieces to cut on the blog post. All right, so again, just kind of repeating the process, but following the angle of that little diamond shape with the next piece. And then you want to trim off any points that are hanging beyond that seam line, like you can see here. And here is that piece to press to open. So now we've got that angled piece and you can see the dreidel shape kind of taking shape as we go forward. This would be a great project to do if you know your kids are home for Thanksgiving break um, if they get a longer Thanksgiving break and you want to do kind of a starter project with them, this comes together so quickly and easily. All right, so here's that next piece. We're going to sew at an angle and then press open again. And then we're adding another piece to the side. So every time you add another piece, you'll trim up just the fabric layers on top. You don't want to trim through that batting, obviously, because that's what we're building this piece onto. All right, and then you can see that rectangle is pressed open, and we just continue moving forward pretty much in the same way. Now, as the pieces, piece starts getting larger that you're building on, you may find that pinning some of these pieces in place will allow you to maintain the shape you're trying to build without your pieces kind of shifting on you. So keep that in mind. You can use pins, just pin through the batting and everything, and then remove those pins as you sew. All right, and you can see we're just building on now with those angled pieces. And don't trim anything up until you add this, the next piece on. All right, so once, let me go back to the previous photo. Once we have it to this uh, stage, we're actually going to trim that batting as well so that we have that dreidel shape or Again, if you turn this the other way, end for end, you'll have a little house shape that you have built. So there it is, nice and trimmed, and all those 
edges along the outside are now raw, but we have our cool little pieced dreidel. Isn't that a neat way of doing it? I really enjoy this technique. All right, so now it's time to add our fusible applique. So this Hebrew letter is a free applique PDF template that you can print right from the blog post. So if you want to make this exactly as it is shown, you can print that template. And then Cheryl uh, really, really loved using Sulky's brand new fusible web, which is called Perfect Applique. So you will use it just like any fusible web and fuse your fabric to it following the directions and then cut out your piece. So this is raw edge applique. Once your uh, applique is cut out, you'll remove the paper backing of the perfect applique fusible web, position it onto uh, the right side of your pieced fabric and then fuse it in place. It's as simple as that. So if you are creating a house instead of a dreidel, you can choose the applique that you want to use. You could do a star, you could do a heart, you could do kind of a home sweet home kind of a vibe. That would be really cute. Um, I like to use cookie cutters sometimes for applique templates. So if you have some stars or hearts, if you're gonna make some Christmas cookies over the weekend and kind of get in the holiday spirit, you could use those um, like a gingerbread man, uh, cookie cutter as your applique template as well. All right, so you'll fuse your applique and then we're going to create the little hanging loop for the pot holder. So you will take your fabric rectangle and we need to fold it in half. And then we're going to unfold it and fold those raw edges in to meet each other. All right. Once we have done that, you're gonna open it up and put a piece of batting inside. And that gives you kind of um, a little bit more plushy uh, hanging loop. So really cute idea. And then we're actually going to fold it back up, encasing our piece of batting, and then add some stitching to it. So about one, two, three, four, five rows of stitching. You can kind of quilt this. Um, it just gives it a little bit more professional look too and kind of ties in the quiltiness of the rest of the pot holder. So now we have our little stitched hanging loop and we're going to layer our pot holder pieces. So this is the backing piece of the pot holder. And then we have a piece of insulated batting that we're also going to add. The insulating insulated batting um, provides a layer of protection between your hot pot and your table. So it redirects the heat away from the table and you can find insulated batting at most fabric and craft stores. Um, it's also available online. A thing to note about insulated batting is it has a little bit of um, like metal inside of it, right? So you wanna be careful what scissors you use to cut your insulated batting. Just a word to the wise. Um, just keep that in mind. All right, so now we have our pieced pot holder front and we're going to pin um, or clip uh, using some wonder clips our hanging loop. So at this point, if you have made a house instead of a dreidel, you will put your hanging loop on the opposite end, right at that corner point, okay? Instead of putting it um, opposite the corner point. All right, so clip that in place, and then we're going to layer up our front, our back, and that piece of insulated batting. So layer those up so that all edges and corners are meeting and then clip or pin the entire perimeter. I really find with something that has a little bit of bulk to it like this, because remember our front has the batting attached to it 
And then we've got the addition of insulated batting and then our fabrics in between, including that hanging loop, which also has batting. So we, we are kind of needing to manage the bulk a little bit. So wonder clips are probably going to be my um, clip of choice here for securing those la layers. And if you don't have wonder clips yet, make sure you put those on your Christmas list because they're the best. I use them for everything. We have two sizes of them. We've got mini um, wonder clips that come in this handy little case, which I love. So we've got the smaller sizes. See how they have a really um, narrow point to them? And then we have kind of the standard wonder clip, which have a little bit wider end. So either one is going to work for this project and for many. All right, so you can see that Cheryl has marked her opening here. <laughs> so smart, Cheryl, because how often do we forget that we need an opening for turning when we are sewing something like a pillow, like the one I was demoing last week? So really great idea to mark your opening. And then she shows you the direction that you're going to start sewing. So you can sew toward those corner points, making your way all the way around the pot holder. That's going to secure your hanging loop also in between those layers. And then you have that opening for turning. All right, so here everything is nice and stitched. Stopping and starting, you can back stitch a little bit at the beginning um, and end of your opening there. And then turn her right side out. So again, if you're creating the little house um, with a different applique on it, your hanging loop will be at the opposite end, which is going to affect your corner point a little bit. You can still sew along that corner. Just know that your hanging loop um, is going to kind of look a little bit different as it is extending off of the tip top of your house. All right, so now you can see that opening needs to be folded in towards the wrong side and kind of sandwiched in between those layers. So you will close your opening using some wonder clips again, or you could use some pins, some heavier duty pins to kind of close your opening shut. And then we're going to top stitch the entire thing, um, making sure that everything is nice and flat. So very, very nice. Now you might be asking, what about the applique? Well, Cheryl didn't sew the applique edges until after everything was completed. That way you're kind of quilting through all layers and that shape is going to be mimicked on the wrong side of your pot holder. Cute idea. So simply choose a uh, coordinating thread color to your applique and sew right inside of those raw edges. And that's going to securely attach your applique, make sure that it doesn't, um, that nothing happens over time, washing and wearing and that good stuff. Plus you're adding that decorative quilting element to the right and wrong side of your pot holder. All right, so there is that finished little project. You can see how quickly that comes together. Um, I mean, I've only been talking for about 18 minutes. Um, so of course it will take you a little bit longer to cut all of your pieces that you need, but it's a really simple project that you can create in time for Hanukkah. You know, package this up with a nice bottle of wine um, and gift it to a host or hostess or just have it on display for your feast for Hanukkah this year. And again, you could easily just flip flop this and create a little house um, a home sweet home housewarming present for um, someone for the holidays as well. All right. So I have another Hanukkah project to show you. And this one is so easily um, changed for different holidays and decor styles simply by choosing a different design. So these are cute little tea towels and we have these towel blanks available at sulky.com and you know last week we were talking about trimming out 
um, pillows and I talked about <clears throat> my obsession with pom-pom trim. <laughs> so I brought it to the party here, added some cute little pom-pom fringe to this uh, towel blank and it just kind of adds a little something um, more handmade to the gift. But you could certainly simply just add embroidery to the towel without adding the trim at all. So these are flower sack towels. We have them in natural color as well as white, and they work for so many different holidays. They are great for host or hostess gifts um, or creating a larger sort of gift, gift basket around your embroidered towel. You know, you could add some ingredients that maybe are on the design that you choose. What I love about these designs, and these are from OESD, you can find them by clicking over to the blog post for these Hanukkah towels. And again, I have linked straight to the blog post in the description of today's post. So you can head on over and find all the links for these particular designs. But what I love about them is they are recipes. So this is a recipe for potato latkes. And this is a recipe for a Hanukkah brisket. And I actually tested this recipe out and made the brisket because I was curious, like, is this a real recipe? Or are we just having fun here? And now I will admit, I did not make a 12 pound brisket, okay? So I quartered this recipe <laughs> and I made a three pound brisket, but the recipe worked out great. My family loved it. So it was, you know, tried and true, I guess. And I'm sure um, everybody out there has their own take on brisket, but I just thought it was a cute idea and you could package this up. Let's say you have a friend or family member that maybe can't make it home for the holidays. You can give them a great recipe with the ingredients to make it, and then they can feel like they are, you know, part of the family for the holiday feast. So great, great idea. Here I have my towel with the ingredients that I used <laughs> to make the brisket. So um, let's get started with the tutorial. First off, I get a lot of questions about what stabilizers to use for things like towel blanks. Um, hand towels, uh, tea towels, um, towels that don't have a plushy nap to them, okay? So for these towels, what I like to use is Sulky Fabrisolvi. Fabrisolvi is a fabric-like stabilizer, but it's really kind of like compressed fibers. And the great thing about that is they completely disappear once you wash the stabilizer away. So the reason I like that for towels is because we're going to see the wrong side of these designs. And with this towel, I have not washed it away yet because if you plan on giving these as gifts, maybe you don't want to wash the towel before you gift it away. I have had people say that to me, you know, I don't want to wash it. I want it to be, you know, brand new for the recipient. So all you have to do is either write it on a little note or tell the recipient that there is still stabilizer attached to the wrong side of the towel. But as soon as they go to wash it, it will wash away. So I like using that for towels because you want the wrong side looking almost as pretty as the right side. And that being said, you want to use the same thread that you're using in the needle in the bobbin, because again, it's going to be visible, um, you know, certain ways that you fold it or when you're using the towel. So here is a picture of my Fabrisolvi in the hoop. And I use two layers for this particular towel because it's a little bit heavier weight and I'm gonna be putting a lot of stitches on here. These designs have a lot of thread work so I want my stabilizer to be able to support all of that. All right, so once I have my stabilizer hooped, I want to either mark the towel by folding it or using a removable marking pen so that I know where I want the design. 
So measure your towel, figure out if you want it along the design along, you know, the corner or centered along one of the ends and mark that either with folding it or by using a removable marking pen. Then you'll use your trusty KK2000 temporary spray adhesive to secure your towel on that hooped stabilizer. All right, then it's just a matter of starting your design. And with all of these little letters and words, there's a lot of jump stitches with these particular designs. So make sure you are clipping your jump threads on the right side as well as on the wrong side of your towel. If you do that with each thread change, then it won't be such a bear to clip those threads on the wrong side of your towel once your embroidery is complete. If you wait until the end and remove your towel and go to turn it around to clip all those jump threads, they're gonna be overlapping and it's gonna be really difficult to get in there with your scissors and clean it all up. So I suggest clipping your jump threads on the right and wrong side while you work your way through the design. And the reason I'm showing you this photo is because this is showing you my favorite little squeezer snips that I love to use for clipping jump threads. I know I talk about these all the time. They are inexpensive. They're at sulky.com and they have this curved end to them. See how it kind of curves up? That is so that you don't accidentally prick into your fabric and accidentally snip a hole in it when you are clipping all those jump threads, especially in a design like this where, you know, it's pretty intricate and there are a lot of jump threads to go through. I highly recommend grabbing up these cute little snips. All right. So once your embroidery is complete, you'll remove your towel and stabilizer from the hoop and you can just trim your stabilizer um, a little bit beyond your design perimeter. Now it's up to you whether you want to leave it intact if you're gifting it away, or if you want to go ahead and rinse all of your stabilizer and let your towel dry before you go to the next step, which is adding your fun pom-pom trim. So as you can see here, I am basting my trim in place along the edge of the towel. And I actually cut off the towel end that is hemmed. I just cut that right off and added my trim piece to the raw edge of just one edge of my towel where that embroidery design is. So you do want to tuck in your trim end so that it is, uh, well actually you don't even need to tuck it in quite yet because we're gonna sandwich that end in between the end of our fabric trim. So our uh, pom-pom fringe is going to be, is going to end at the towel end and then we're gonna wrap around this fabric edge so that it conceals the edge of the trim. All right. And again, all the instructions for this, all the dimensions to fit your towel blank, all of it, are on the Sulky blog that I linked to in the description of the post today. So you'll find the instructions for the towels as well as the instructions and that Hebrew letter template um, on the Sulky blog. All right, so after you've basted your pom-pom trim or you could use Rick Rack or another trim that you love, once you have uh, basted that in place, you will add your fabric strip. And again, you want it to be long enough or wide enough so that you can double fold it and conceal all the raw ends um, inside of your decorative fabric. So then you will sew your fabric in place along that long edge and you can see I have installed a zipper foot here and I've moved my needle all the way up close to um, my pom-pom fringe uh, threads. All right, well, let me go back to that image. So once that long edge is sewn, you will fold your fabric to the right side and kind of give it a little bit of a press. 
Keep your iron away from those pom-poms, depending, you know, whether or not you know what those pom-poms are made of. They may not be able to withstand the heat from your iron, just in case. So iron, you know, press your fabric toward the right side, and then that raw end of your fabric, the opposite long edge, you will fold under. Then you will fold the whole strip towards the towel wrong side, okay? And you're going to make sure to fold it so that the previous um, hem fold conceals your previous stitching line. Give it some pins and then you will top stitch just underneath where you secured the pom-pom fringe. So you can see here, I have top stitched right next to that trim edge which secures the back side of my trim to the back side of my towel. That way all the raw edges are concealed and you want to also make sure along your ends that you top stitch there as well and that you tuck in those raw ends inside so that all your raw edges are completely concealed. So again, all those instructions are on that sulky blog post so you can make sure to conceal all of your ends and edges and everything looks, whoa, I'm losing stuff. Everything looks nice and tidy. That is something about these towels is they are nice and big. Um, they're like a nice dish towel. Um, so, and they're really great quality too. All right, so we've got our towels. Oops, oh my gosh, I'm really getting ahead of myself. Excuse me. Okay, here we go. So here is that latka towel that I showed you in its, all, its finished glory. And so you can choose from that or the brisket, or you can find a lot of machine embroidered recipe designs um, just by searching for them, just by Googling them. OESD has some other great ones as well. Um, so if these Hanukkah designs aren't your thing, you can find other ones for cookies, breads, jams, pies. Um, so they make just a really, really cute um, holiday gift um, or hostess gift, you know? Um, I hope people are still doing that. When you get invited over, it's a great idea to bring just a little something and an embroidered towel is so nice. They can put it out right away and even use it, you know, that evening. So um, great little gift ideas that you can also package other things with as well to kind of complete the gift. All right, so I had, you know, some kind of happy fingers and kind of worked forward a little too far, but we're going to get to another project today. I know three projects, it is crazy. And, but I just got so excited about these when I was um, looking through some blanks that I could showcase um, that are new to sulky.com, you know, we have carried these embroider buddies for quite some time now, and they are so great for the little ones at Christmas time or really any time of year, birthdays, any kind of celebration. Um, and I just have to show you this guy. Oh my gosh, he is the cutest little reindeer. You know, we also have a Santa, we have a snowman, we've got unicorns, we've got um, hedgehogs, we've got bears. Um, there are so many to choose from. And the great thing about these is that they are made so that you can add personalized machine embroidery to their tummies. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do that here today on camera. And a couple of things you're going to need. First off, you need to find the perfect design, right? So you could easily use, uh, just stitch out a name of the recipient. That is super cute. I see those all the time. You could choose a great holiday themed design. You could choose a licensed design for a sports team that maybe you find online, something that suits the recipient's interest. And, you know, these are cute for kids of all ages, honestly. Um, they are 
making them for members of nursing homes and long-term care facilities I have seen as well. So if you have a loved one um, who is in one of those facilities, they might really love an embroider buddy as well. So lots of different ways to think about gifting these little guys. So speaking of the perfect design, we've got our Santa Sangs machine embroidery collection and I really wanted to use the Just Believe design from this. I thought this would be so cute on the little reindeer's belly. So this design collection is available at sulky.com. Each one of these designs comes in three sizes. So there's a size for a four by four hoop, a five by seven hoop, and a nine by 10 hoop. For this little belly, I am doing the four by four hooping so that it fits nice right on the tan part of our little reindeer's stomach. So uh, I also wanted to mention, you can definitely purchase the collection on its own as a digital product. You can also purchase a thread assortment for Santa sayings, and that's gonna come with the designs. So it's, almost like, you know, Christmas is coming early. You get 10 spools of sulky thread that are used for the entire design collection, plus you get the design collection included with purchase of the thread. So either way you wanna look at it, you either grab up the thread assortment and get the designs included, or you grab up the designs alone, okay? So it's available both ways. In addition to the collection, you can just buy these designs individually. So if one is speaking to you more than the others, by all means, just grab up that particular design. Okay, along with finding the perfect design, you will also need two different stabilizers for this guy. Now I was talking about embroidering plush things earlier, right? So we are not going to actually hoop this fabric. This is like a velveteen um, or what? what is it actually made of? Let's see. It's like a fleecy velveteen polyester material. Okay. <laughs> Do you like that? <laughs> so we are not going to hoop him because we don't want his belly to suffer from hoop burn, which means the hoop, when it is secured, actually mars the fabric fibers and you can never get the hoop burn out. So since we don't want him to suffer from some traumatic hoop burn, we're going to do what I call hoopless embroidery. So for that, we need to use Sulky Sticky Plus. This is an adhesive backed tearaway stabilizer that is going to allow us to stick this guy right to the stabilizer in the hoop and then we can embroider our design knowing that he's not gonna go anywhere while the uh, machine arm is doing its thing. In addition to the Sticky Plus, we also need to be sure to have some Sulky Solvi. Solvi is a clear film topper that is going to make sure that our thread sits on top of that plush uh, fabric surface rather than sinking down into the fabric pile. So we're going to put Solvi on top of him once we have him in the hoop. So how are we going to hoop him? What do we do? First and foremost, we have to remove all the stuffing inside this guy. And like I mentioned, machine embroidery blanks are made in such a way that allows us to get inside without um, or making sure that the fabric can stay far away from the hoop or the needle arm while it is stitching out the design. So we're going to unzip this guy and we're gonna take out his main part of stuffing. See how that's nice and neat and contained? We also need a little bit more room to groove. So we're going to take out the main part of his head. That is another cute little contained ball of stuffing. Now, you can also remove this portion. Well, actually, 
You cannot. It is sewn in. And it's totally fine because it's not going to get in our way. All right. So now we have this floppy guy and we will be able to maneuver him onto our hooped stabilizer and stitch out our design. So I'm going to switch cameras here so that I can show you how to prepare our stabilizer for the embroider buddy. All right, let me get on the right vantage point. All right, so here is my table and I'm gonna try and project because I have to move a little bit farther away from my microphone. So if you are having trouble hearing me at this point, just um, increase the volume on your computer for a moment, but I will try to project. So here is my sewing table and I have my embroidery module attached. I have my design already loaded onto the machine. And so it is in place for the first part of my design. Here I have my Sulky Sticky Plus and I've hooped it with the paper side facing up. You could see I have these nice grid lines if I wanna use that for a placement aid. And it actually says, hoop this side up. All right, so we can't go wrong here. The other thing I have is my trusty Sulky Sticky Plus slitting pen. One of my favorite tools for hoopless embroidery. This is specifically made, see this point to it? This is specifically made so that you can slice through the paper backing of the stabilizer without slicing through the stabilizer itself. So you may in the past have used a pin or the tip of a pair of scissors to do this, but the slitting pen is really so much easier and you don't run the risk of accidentally slicing through the stabilizer and having to re-hoop a piece and all of that drama that can go on. Am I right? <laughs> all right. So I am slicing through just that paper and I'm gonna lift up a little corner of the paper backing, peel it away. And now I have revealed the sticky surface of the stabilizer that I can attach my embroider buddy to. See, now my sticky has been revealed. All right, let me just tidy up a little bit. I always wanna make sure that I put my slitting pen back in its trusty little house. And you could see it has a little rubber tip that comes with it that protects you from that really sharp end. All right. So now I have to get my embroider buddy onto that sticky surface. Oh, I should also mention it is a great idea to mark the center of your buddy using a removable marking pen of some kind or some chalk. I'm going to use some chalk on mine because when we are hooping this, um, you know, we're moving him so much. We want to make sure that our design gets sewn right in the center of his belly. Now, of course, if you want it in a different spot, just mark it in a different way. But I'm just going to go across and mark the center with my chalk. And then I'm going to go up and down and mark that center mark. And I'm actually going to place a pin um, in the center just through that top layer because it's pretty difficult to see my markings through that plush fabric. And you would think I could find a pin. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to reach inside. I'm just going to place a pin right where I made those markings. And then I can remove that after. I got this guy in the hoop. All right. I'm going to do a pin 
uh, going the other way as well. And then I'll show you what that looks like. So now I have my center cross marks marked using pins. All right, and now we need to get this guy on our sticky stabilizer. So you kind of turn him a little bit inside out, um, but not all the way. And you're gonna take your center mark and align that with your hoop markings, your hoop um, notches, okay? And it's important to note, sometimes those hoop notches might make it seem like you are off center. So really pay attention to that. And you know what, if you have a different kind of um, placement method that you prefer, by all means, use it. If you have one of those machines that has the snowman stickers um, to align your little embroider buddy, please use that. If you have a camera on your machine where you can place your design absolutely perfectly onto your fabric, by all means, use it. All right, so now we have our embroider buddy completely stuck to that sticky stabilizer. And I'm going to place the hoop onto my machine. You wanna make sure that any of this backing uh, fabric, like, there we go. The back of the animal is completely out of the way of the stitching. So if those portions need to go inside out, then get him where you want it. Now, I did mention that this is a plush fabric and we need our topper. So first off, I'm gonna brush the fibers the same direction so that when I add the embroidery, there isn't any weird fibers going this way or that and getting trapped by the stitches. So just brush it a little bit with your fingertips. Make sure everything is nice. And then we're gonna place this guy onto the machine. So. You can see I went in a little bit sideways so that this guy's face could make the clearance from underneath my machine. Okay. Okay. Now, the other thing I have done is I set my machine to do a basting stitch around the design. That's going to do two things. It's going to secure our topper and it's going to further secure our embroider buddy in the hoop. All right. So I may have picked a design that's actually too large for this guy because I'm struggling getting my hoop actually attached. So I'm gonna see, oh, it's the head. Okay. There we go. So you may have to readjust, make sure you um, get all the fabric away from the stitching area. Got a little bit of him, there we go. All right, so I'm going to do my basting stitch. Make sure that I pet this guy. Add my topper in place. And then I'm going to press start. I'm gonna stick with this because if my design is too large and I have it measured properly, then I'm going to need to stop the machine and resize my design and then do all of this, well, do the basting port part again. Oh, 
right, so it looks perfect. I'm just gonna make sure that I don't have any fabric caught in any of the basting stitches. And I do have a tiny bit up here in the corner. So I'm just gonna snip the basting stitches and remove that little corner that caught onto the back of the animal. There we go. And now I have a nice flat area ready to accept the rest of the design. I can see it's a little difficult to see, so I'm actually going to try and move my camera um, without showing you the total mess on my floor at the moment. There's a little bit better vantage point. It's hard to get in there with all of this plush fabric and everything to contend with, but now I am ready to stitch the rest of the design and this portion of my reindeer is completely flat and inside of those basting stitches, which is where my design is gonna go, I don't have any overlapping fabrics and nothing is in the way of my stitching. All right, so let me go ahead and switch my camera back over. So I hope that was a little bit easier to understand um, using my camera next to my machine. I know it's still a little bit um, difficult to see everything that's going on, but I hope that that gave you a better overview of how to use these embroider buddies and how to personalize them because they make really, really great gifts and I think that you will really enjoy personalizing those for um, lots of different loved ones, all the way from little ones or babies first Christmas, all the way up to um, our loved ones that are in long-term care facilities and things like that. So um, I hope you enjoy those gift ideas. Um, I hope that you have a very, very happy Thanksgiving. We here at Sulky are thankful for each and every one of you and so happy that you choose to spend your time with us every week on So What and for our special events um, that happen throughout the year. So speaking of that, make sure that you sign up for our lovely llama webcast. Desiree Havoc of Desiree's Designs will be joining us on December 13th at 2 p.m. Eastern time. And then on New Year's Eve, you can join us for our New Year's Eve So Along with Sally Tomato. So while you're signing up, for the Lovely Llama webcast, make sure and register, register, register for the New Year's Eve event so you can get your pattern, you can get your embroidery design files, you can get your kit, and you can have everything pre-cut and ready to sew on New Year's Eve with me and Jessica Barrera of Sally Tomato. And we will be joined by lots of special guests throughout the night. Um, and let me just tell you, the, they'll, they'll be giving away some really great stuff. Okay. All right. So thank you everybody for joining me today. I hope you had a great time um, learning about these three projects and I hope you decide to make some of them. Have a very, very happy Thanksgiving and I will see you next week for another So What?